Hey guys, Uncommon Ramen here. Um, today I received a Kickstarter in the mail, so I'm going to do an unboxing for that. Um, the game that I received the Kickstarter for was actually an old game from Atlas Games called Gloom. And this is the older uh, core game. Um, we received Gloomier today. Um, so we got Gloomier, Night at Hemlock Halls. We also have the Gloom Chronicles, uh, second edition Gloom, and we have the Gloom Grief Case. Just take a look at that. You can already kind of see some of the, I guess, I don't know if that's damage or what that is on the top, but we'll kind of go into that in a minute. Um, so these are the things we're going to take a look at. Uh, really quickly, I'm just going to take a look into this guy right here. The uh, Gloom Chronicles. Um, because this one is actually for Gloom. Despite the fact that you can actually uh, carry this one over to Gloom as well. Um, it is called Gloomier. It's compatible with Gloom and all its expansions. But for whatever reason, they decided to call it Gloomier. So. And the art looks to be a tad bit more on the realistic side. So we're going to take a look at gloom chronicles really quick here had a nice little tear spot at the top and it seems to be in a ziploc yeah there we go i don't remember oh i see okay so these are they foil all right so we got gloom chronicles uh rules here creating your chronicle Choose your chapter, unchronicled chronicles, cast your characters, death and rebirth. Got some setting up of the scene, specify your setting, dissimilar settings, rule the roost, get in the game, your awful aftermath. And setting sorrowful scenes, which continues on the back here. Got some looks at the cards here, front and back. Well, let's just take a look at these guys then. Okay, so, for starters, this front one is foil, which I was not expecting, and I don't know if the rest of them are as well. Oh, they are. Okay, so they're not see-through. So this is the Unhappy Birthday, so it's telling you to set up the core gloom, and it's just setting a scene, I guess. Oh, just in case people have a hard time getting into... I guess the style of the game, maybe? So this is chapter one, and then on the back it has the aftermath. Oh, and then it just keeps going. Trapped on a train. So this is chapter two. And then we have the aftermath. Interesting. These things set up kind of a story so that you don't have to ad-lib, which is kind of, I mean, it's good. I think one of the biggest issues that this game had is that if you, uh, and it tells you what to set up too. I love that. Uh, if you were playing with a group of people that just weren't into those types of games where they kind of have to ad-lib a story, this game kind of got a little unfortunate. Um, so it's nice that they have kind of a a thing here to help to set it up for you so you don't have to worry about... I mean, you still have to come up with your own story, but at least you have something to back a backdrop to uh, play off of. So that's pretty cool. So we got the Menacing Mansion. That first one was The World's Unfair. 
On the back of this, we go to chapter 11. So each of these, once you finish them, you'll move into, so this one says set up core, glo core, glo core gloom. This is chapter five, and this is called the uh, Sinister Circus. I think it's cool that it gives a backdrop because it makes it more accessible to people who weren't necessarily uh, into the game. Um, I don't think it needed it. Um, Dinner with the Duke. Uh, I don't think it necessarily needed it, but, uh, you know, anything to make it more accessible, to get more players to play it, I think that's pretty cool. So these are just some of those cards that help with that, it looks like. Um, it, should, it tells you, you know, step by step where to go and, you know, what happens. Um, we got the long nap. And this one says, set up gloomier, night at Hemlock Hall, uh, the inspector as a guest, and use the final case and the murder, murderer as stories. <clears throat> so I think that's pretty cool. To set the scene, I guess if you don't, um, if you have a hard time, like really coming up with something uh, on the fly, especially because this game does really tap into the uh, imaginative um, realms of things. Uh, this can give you a nice kickstart to the brain to try and help you um, succeed at this better. The Zookeeper Vendetta. Set up core gloom and unhappy homes. Set aside the... Or set aside and the menacing menagerie. So it gives a direction. I think that's pretty cool. Because normally you're just kind of winging it <laughs> while you try and kill your family. And I, you know, now we have a little bit of direction. Unsettling storm. Plus it helps to uh, integrate the expansion. So you can see here, set up gloom and unfortunate uh, expeditions. So, you know, if you try and put all of the expansions, which I'll, once we get through this card really quick, I'll just show you that real quick there. Um, there are... This is the Gloom core game, but then there are also, besides Gloomier itself, four, um, ex four of the black and white expansions. There's a lot more as far as the uh, uh, cards that they they uh, put color on, like the uh, uh, Cthulhu Gloom, and I, I even think there's like a Munchkin Gloom or whatever. Um, so this kind of tells you how to set that up but it looks like it's only using so this one says gloom unwelcome guests uh unhappy homes and whiskers so it's only using the um black and white gloom set so far it, nothing is referenced uh the cthulhu gloom or any of the other ones the trial of Boyles malone got horrid homecoming let's see gloomier and Use the Bachelor and Lady Lola as guests. Pretty cool. Winter Wedding. Gloom, Unwelcome Guests. Use Guests, wolf, Woeful Widow, and Poor Relations. I'm digging this. I think this is really cool. It'll make it a lot easier to get to the table. Normally, if you're going to bring this to the table, you're either going to be playing with people who are good writers or good actors. <laughs> so your theater friends or your uh, reading buffs will be good at this game. But a lot of people, uh, people who, and, and I'm not saying too much here, I'm just pointing out what I've come across. Uh, the people who play video games heavily um, have a very difficult time with this game because um, it's it's harder for them to come up with stories off the top of their head. Um, it's easier for them to just read the card that they have and then just leave it at that. And that kind of takes away from what the game is about. Uh, the Highest of T's.
We got Gloomier, Night at Hemlock Hall, uh, Unquiet Dead, and Madame Zora as a guest. So we're doing a suspicious seance here. Some talk about the aftermath there. We got Unwelcome War. And then it appears the last one to be the big picture. We're going to set up Gloomier Night at Hemlock Hall and use Buddy Bartleby as a guest and the Broken Heart as a story. And it, you can see how it referenced different... So if you did something like this, then you go to this chapter or blah, blah, blah. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the foil, but I've never been a fan of foil. So um, I think the foils are too easy to damage. And since these guys are a strange size for a card, they're going to be difficult to find sleeves for. But I still think it's pretty cool. The production quality is very nice. So next up we have Gloomier, Night at Hemlock Hall. So as I mentioned before, the artwork on here is definitely more realistic. Now if you look at the original uh, Gloom, and I think this is what, the first edition Gloom? <clears throat> Let's see if I can find anywhere that indicates said edition. Um, not looking like it, but anyway, so you can see here where we have the art, um, and it looks less, I mean, it's cartoonish, but less cartoonish, whereas here, I mean, that's very obviously, I mean, look at the children in comparison. Yeah. So, anyway. I'm gonna jump into this guy. Um, I should have grabbed my knife. Got it right here. Yeah, I was hoping that would be smooth, but that didn't work out so well. Tell me that worked? Yeah, well. It did the job. We can get in now. All right. And we'll grab the rules here. Gloomier. Night at Hemlock Hall. There. That's foreboding. Oh, they folded the rule book. That's weird. They usually just have a leaflet type pamphlet here. So we're going to go into here. We got the tragic tale and some stuff about uh, how this is worse than uh, its standalone sequel, Gloom. Or it is a standalone sequel to Gloom and how it is more tragic in general. So we got some components here. We're talking about the cards, some events. It's got some guests in here as well. Very nice. Had to have an expansion for the first game to get guests. Gonna choose your family members. Gonna make some stories. So because the um, cards are see-through, they ask that you uh, really just pay attention to the table and not the hands, because that's kind of cheating, if you will. And let me tell you, if the only way you can enjoy a game is by cheating or by winning, then my, my guys, you, you probably should consider not playing games.
Just saying. I know that the goal of the game is to win, but the point of the game is to have fun. Okay, we've got our last page here talking about some unwelcome guests because we have those in here. Did it have the other ones too? Story cards? Yeah, it has. Story cards, unwelcome guests. What else does it have in here? Eh, just going over the normal basics. So that's our rules. And the iconic thing about Gloom is that see-through card thing that they were talking about. So you can see here that these are plastic cards. Um, and they are clear. You can see straight through them. So this is the back of the card. This is what it looks on the front. And the reason for that is because you're going to be overlaying these cards, um, especially these death cards right here, onto the family members as you play the game. I'm going to go over these real quick. I just wanted to find the... Uh, family members real quick here. So these are your family members and you can see where they have these dots indicating where they can have modifiers and everything. However, they don't have anything at the very beginning. And as you play, you're going to have cards in your hand like this one was swindled and swooned. So we've got uh, Adria uh, Boveus, the cunning criminal. Um, and when you play these cards, you're going to play them on top of them and you are trying to get as many negative modifiers as you can. Um, you want your family to have died in the most horriblest way um, while trying to um, add positive modifiers to your opponents. Positive modifiers in this game are bad. Um, so by doing so, um, you're going to take these cards and overlay them. And uh, you create a story right here. So Adria Bovis was swindled and swooned. You're just going to talk about the situation that got her swindled and swooned um, as you overlay the card. Um, to create a uh, contiguous story to whatever you're working on at that time with your family. And it can tie into uh, the other families at the table. Um, obviously, if you're playing positive modifiers on them, um, you can somehow tie in the antics that are happening on their part in, in their family with your family to help um, make a larger story or give you more, uh, you know, uh, I guess, leg room to work with. Um, but you can see that there are tons of different modifiers that you can put on these. Um, so like if I was to overlay here, it was trapped in a trunk, and I could still next turn play this one on top of that uh, with Swindled and Swooned, and now I'm adding even more modifiers. Um, whereas now my opponents can then turn around and, okay, so this character is netting me negative 45 points, which is fantastic, but... My, parent, my my opponents can just be like, oh, by the way, um, that person, Adria Bovis, was killed by kittens overlaying this. And while they don't really take away the 40 points, um, they do uh, take away the negative 15 right there. And they put a positive 10 modifier there. So what was originally going to net us 55, was it 55? Yeah, 55 points uh, is now only going to net us 30 points. So... Um, just a really interesting uh, way to get rid of or to, to help uh, ruin your opponent's plans and everything. Um, you also have modifiers that will straight up blank old modifiers. So if I had had a high modifier up there, you could place this on top of that to blank that modifier and kill the character. Um, the idea here is to kill your characters uh, as faster than anybody else. So the first person to kill all of their characters is um will end the game uh so if anybody has living characters those living characters won't count towards their um their point value and at that point you're gonna everyone is gonna count up the modifiers on all of their dead characters and the person with the lowest modifier uh is the winner okay so we're gonna look at this real quick we got um adria bova Boveus. we got butterfield we got the Colonel. We got Evelyn Y. We got Dire Omen. We got Fletcher. Inspector Johnson. Lady Lola. 
Madame Zora. I feel like these are not the family members, actually. These are the unwelcome guests. Oh, they are the unwelcome guests. My bad. We're looking at the un unwelcome guests. The unwelcome guests um, function very similarly to the family members uh, because they can be added to your family. Um, they start out in the center of the table and through some set of circumstances, they'll end up in, in your family as unwelcome guests and you can place modifiers on them and kill them to a help add to your um, negative modifiers. With the bachelor. Sorry, his name is Sir Bromley, the bachelor. We've got Sophie. We've got Tex. We got the twins, which I would have expected to be family members. We got Precarious Prodigy. We got Jenny Nightingale. Got August Winters, the Dowager, Lord Wellington Smith, or Smythe, and Harry Drake. So the unwelcome guests, I also have uh, backsides to them. So you can see that some of them, uh, when they come to you, can end up coming to you with uh, really bad modifier. I think actually this was the back side. And that this is the uh, side that you receive because it tells you how you receive them. So it follows money. So the ne the first person that plays down a money card, this guy, this person is going to add themselves to that family. And then uh, subsequently, as people play money cards, uh, she's going to jump around the table. So like... This one starts with pl uh, plus 20 modifier, minus 10. See, these ones, the minus 10 are kind of the ones you want to you wanna go with. You can see, like, this is plus 30, so that is going to be horrible if you don't find a way to get those modifiers out of there and kill her. <laughs> or another one right here, plus 20. Plus 10 from the twins. Prudence. Um, are these stories? Yeah, these are stories. I didn't know the stories turned into unwelcome guests. Unless these are part of the story building from the um, Gloom Chronicles. Well, I don't know. But anyway, um, these ones on top are definitely unwelcome guests. I'm not 100% sure what these guys back here are because... Um, some of these expansions I haven't actually fully played. Then we have the cards with the modifiers. Um, so if they are clear in the center like this, these are just modifiers. You're going to play them on top. They, they'll they have an effect here. Some of them will. Not all of them will have an effect here. But the thing that you want to pay attention to is the modifiers over here and then this little symbol, uh, especially for playing unwelcome guests. This is going to be a big thing. And then what it says was va uh, vexed by vapors so that you can kind of build your uh, story off of that. And there's, there's quite a few of them. So we got Was Vexed by Vapors. We've got uh, Was Swindled and Swooned. We've got uh, Was Trapped in a Trunk. And then these ones right here are actually deaths. So this is what the back of the card is going to look like. And it says Rest in Peace. So this is when the character is, is killed. Um, you can only play... If you play a death, it has to be the first card you play. Um... You actually can play two cards per turn, uh, but if you play anything that's not a death first, then you cannot follow up by playing a death. Uh, it prevents you from putting down a huge uh, advantageous modifier like this and then immediately killing the character before anybody has a chance to respond to it. Um, so deaths have to be played first, and there's quite a few of them. We got uh, was fatally smitten, uh, was killed by a kitten, uh, fell while ballooning, was poisoned while pruning, fell prey to the plague, reports were quite vague, 
went out on top, didn't notice the drop, was killed with a candle, couldn't handle the scandal, was shot at the shoot, was slain for their loot, wasted away, was turned into pate, died for love, called the wrong bluff, made a tragic mistake, was done in by the cake, was found in the well, and uh, started to smell. So these are our um, deaths. We had a couple of modifiers as well. The next cards we have here are event cards. Uh, event cards don't actually tend to stick around on the table. Once you play them, they get discarded, and it just tells you what to do with them. So like this one says, discard all modifier cards on a, on a one living character. So if one of your characters is just not going well because everyone at the table is just giving it positive modifier after positive modifier this would be a great way alibi to get rid of all of that then we got body double crime wave dramatic development double cross Foiled again. The killer strikes. Midnight surprise. Mistaken identity. And plot twist. Oh, there was more. Sorry. Who done it? All right. So those are first set of cards then we got a second set in here Is there anything special in that no cool got another setup card here then we're gonna look at what appears to be modifiers yeah okay so this is all of the rest of the modifiers got cuddled with cats I guess I'll pull these off so you can see the modifiers since they all kind of just seep through Danced with the Duchess. Discovered a diary. All these positive modifiers. Eavesdropped on an enemy. Enjoyed Elevenses. Found a key. In the kennel. Had a delightful dinner. Kissed in the kitchen. Married a maid. Romanced a rake. You would think that would be bad. Stole from the study. Thwarted a thief. Uncovered a clue. Was engaged to an heir. So now we're looking at the negative modifiers. We got ate a bad biscuit. Attracted attention. Brawled over Brandy. One thing I want to point out here. This is new. Um, they have had flavor text on on the cards before. But one of the, some of these cards are like... Uh, like this one says, attach, er, uh, attracted attention. And it says, what did they do to draw unwanted attention? So it gives you a prompt to help you kind of come up with a way, a story to play the card. 
Because like I said, part of the game is coming up with the story, otherwise you can't play the card. Uh, choked on the cheese. How did they offend this aristocrat? So, uh, embarrassed the Earl. Fell down the dumbwaiter. Got lost in the library. Had too much marmalade. Longed for a lost tro or lost love. Passed out in the parlor. That one's good. Minus 45. Ran, ran afoul of a foul. Said something suspicious. Saw a ghost in the gallery. Saw something shocking. Shared a sad story. Some of these modifiers are really good. Snitched and got stitches. Stumbled on the stairs. Vomited violently. Was actually an imposter. Was attacked in the attic. Was bitten by bedbugs. Was burnt by the butler. Was cornered by corgis. Was deeply depressed. Was detained in a dungeon. Was dis dismissed by the Duke. Was disturbed by a doll. Was duped by a debutante. Was flogged by frogs. Was fooled by a foe. Was gored by the gazebo. Was in peril of, or was it, was in peril in the pantry. Was maligned over martinis. Was needled by nuts. How do you get needled by nuts? For being such a fill... I don't even know what that word is. <laughs> uh, was robbed at the races. Placed a bad bet or pursued by pickpockets. Ah, interesting. Was ruined by rumors. Was seen in the cemetery. I don't see why that's a bad thing. Was slapped by a socialite. Was stabbed in the stables. And last but not least, we have was summoned to a seance. Where's the family? I'm confused. Because I am confused, I have to do some research here. A character card might have either an unwelcome guest or a story on its reverse side. Oh, I see. So the, the character cards double. Choose a family. Separate the 20 double-sided character cards from the rest of the deck and spread them on the table, purple portrait side up. In Gloomier, all 20 characters belong to the Hemlock Hall family, so each player simply chooses four characters they'd like to tell the story about. Oh, okay, so this is a little bit different than in uh, normal Gloom. Um, oh, did I drop one? 
no, that was seen in the cemetery. We already knew that. So in the original Gloom, they actually had four different families and four characters per four or five characters per family that had a normal backing, um, very similar to the death cards. So if I can find, yeah, like this, um, it, it would have a normal backing like that with the gloom symbol, um, minus the rest in peace part. Um, and then you would, uh, you would be trying to kill those, those characters off. Um, when they released unwelcome guests and stories, um, they were a whole separate card, but in this one, they actually have a whole backing where you have, uh, each of the characters that are part of the family also as unwelcome guests, um, or as stories, which is what I thought these were was stories. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, that way the family doesn't have to be the same every single time it gives you replay value so that is what you get with the gloomier hemlock halls uh expansion it is a standalone expansion so you can play it by itself um you do not need uh the gloom chronicles the gloom chronicles is more or less just to help uh create the story um but that's pretty cool so the next thing we're going to look at is the gloom grief case so you can look at the side of this they have all kinds of neat little symbols that show up on the um, uh, cards themselves. You can also see here this uh, weird light um, scraping, it almost looks like. That actually is, you can see that plain as day, even off camera. Um, I think that was obviously from being rubbed against the uh, packaging too much, but it, I'm hoping it'll go away. Who knows? Anyway, so the gloom part here that you see at the top is uh, spot gloss, and it's hard to show on the camera, but it's also foil. So it's a very, it's a metallic red. You can just barely make it out right there. Um, so it's spot gloss and it's foil. And so this is supposed to be a um, single carrying case for all of the gloom series. It will also carry all of the uh, colored gloom cards from the Cthulhu gloom and the other uh, gloom series that they released. So we have uh, this front pocket, I believe, which is for uh, all the rules. And then it has the different um, valleys for each of the uh, card or to help you um, uh, organize the cards. And then it comes with dividers. So we can kind of look at what um, sets you should expect to be able to fit in here. And like I said, it should fit everything. So we got gloom the core game, as well as Unfortunate Expeditions, Unhappy Homes, and these are plastic, by the way. These are not cardboard, so these are actually very substantial. Um, Unhappy Homes, Unquiet Dead, Unwelcome Guests, and then Cthulhu Gloom, which uh, was the first time they started using full color on the cards. Uh, they still are clear cards, however. You got Unpleasant Dreams, which is an expansion to Cthulhu Gloom. Then we have Fairy Tale Gloom. We have Munchkin Gloom. We have Space Gloom. Uh, Gloom of Thrones. We have Gloomir, uh, Night, uh, Night at Hemlock Hall. And then we have four just plain black dividers um, in case they release expansions to uh, Gloomier Night at Hemlock Hall. Uh, I do not have any of these guys right here, the Fairy Tale Munchkin, Space, Thrones, Cthulhu, none of this because it was all color and I, I really like the aesthetic of the black and white. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't go out there and buy it if you are a fan of any of those uh, you know IPs then you know you could it couldn't hurt to pick them up um, just it wasn't my style and now that I have this giant gloom case and not a whole lot of things to put into it you know maybe it'll prompt me to go pick these guys up but if you look here it doesn't fit the box so let's see how close the fit is because it may not support sleeves not that you really need to sleeve these they're 
plastic. Yeah, that's a tight fit. Yeah, okay, so the, the cards fit pretty much exactly. So if you are a feverish sleever, like I usually am, um, you will not be able to fit sleeves in this box. Uh, however, as I mentioned before, you do not need to sleeve these cards. They are plastic. They will last forever. Um, so it's there's very little point in sleeving them. Plus, sleeving them is going to make them even harder to see through than they already are. So that is Gloom, the grief case, and Gloomier, a night at Hemlock Hall, as well as the Gloom Chronicles. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments or just want to say a little something something, leave those in the comments below. Um, I will be removing any negative comments, so please keep it classy. There is no reason to bring negativity into this. And uh, if you feel the need to support me, you can check out my Patreon uh, under patreon.com slash uncommon ramen. Caps on the U, caps on the R. Um, and you can support me there. Um, I do this in my free time, so any amount of uh, support would be welcome. Um, that way I can bring you more content like this. And until next time, guys, peace.